coming to the first question fill in the blanks first bit the center of the circles lies in circle either exterior or interior now moving on to the solution for the first bit we know that circle is a collection of all points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from a fixed point in a plane therefore let us consider so figure of the circle that is shown in the figure here the fixed point is known as center and the fixed distance is known as the radius therefore center of the circle always lies in the interior of the circle now coming to the second bit a point whose distance from the center of circle is greater than radius lies in the edge of the circle that is exterior because if we consider a circle that is as shown in figure with center o we know that radius is the distance between center and any point of this circle let us name the point as p the distance between o and p is known as radius if we consider the distance greater than r then we can say that it always lies outside the circle let or be the distance sum r plus d then it always lies outside the circle therefore a point whose distance from the center of circle is greater than its radius always lies in the exterior of the circle moving on to first question fill in the blanks now let us find the solution for third fourth fifth and sixth bits initially let us consider the third bit for this he says that longest chord of circle is a dash of the circle let us consider a circle as shown in figure with center o we know that longest chord of the circle is the diameter since if we draw a chord between any two points that will be less than radius always but if we draw any chord on the circle the distance between two points on the circle other than the line passing through the center will have the length less than the diameter therefore diameter is the longest chord of the circle now moving on to the fourth bit an arc is a when its ends or the ends of the diameter let us consider the figure as given let us name the points at the ends of the line passing through the center or the chord passing through the center as ab now it divides the circle into two equal parts therefore the arc formed by the chord passing through the center is nothing but the semicircle moving on to fifth bit segment of the circle is a region between arc and edge of the circle we know that segment of the circle is a region between arc and the chord of the circle by the definition now moving on to the sixth bit a circle divides plane on which it lies into three equal parts because if we consider a circle the points lying the points lying about the circle are of three types that is one is interior of the circle other is the exterior of the circle and some of the points lies on the circle therefore circle divides the plane into three parts in which it lies moving on to second question write true or false give reasons for your answers now moving on to the solution for the first bit line segment joining the center to any point on the circle is called as radius of the circle that is true because all the points of the circle are equidistant from the center and that equal distance is known as radius now moving on to the second bit a circle has only finitely number of equal chords that is false because for example if we consider a circle let us consider a chord that is passing through the center which is nothing but diameter as circle has an infinite number of points on it we can draw a infinite number of chords passing through the center 
therefore we can't say that there will be finite number of chords on the circle which are of equal length now moving on to the third bit if a circle is divided into three equal arcs each is a major arc that is false because if we consider a circle it is divided into three equal arcs that is AB, BC and CA if we consider AB as the arc then other arc that is ACB will be the major arc but AB, AC and CB can't be the major arcs individually moving on to second question right true or false give reasons for your answers now moving on to the solution for the fourth bit a chord of the circle which is twice as long as radius is called as diameter of the circle that is true because we know that chord which is passing through the center of the circle will be having the length as two times the radius therefore that will be the diameter of the circle now moving on to the fifth question sector is the region between chord and its corresponding arc that is false because segment is nothing but the region between chord and the either of its arcs but it is not the region between the chord and its corresponding arc if we consider a circle and let us consider a chord AB then the region between AB and the arc is called as minor sigma and other remaining part is known as major segment now moving on to the sixth bit a circle is a plane figure it is true because by the virtue of definition we can say that a collection of all points in a plane which are at a fixed distance from fixed point in a plane is called a circle moving on to question number one recall that two circles are congruent if they have the same radii prove that equal chords of congruent circles subtain equal angles at their centers now moving on to the solution let us consider two congruent circles as shown in figure let the center of one congruent figure be O and other congruent figure be O dash we know that the radii of two circles will be equal let us consider two chords AB and CD of equal lengths in two circles let us draw them that is AB and CD both are of equal lengths now we need to prove that angles subtended by them at the center must be equal that is angle AOB is equal to angle CO dash D we need to prove in order to prove this let us consider in both triangles that is triangle AOB and triangle CO dash D OA is equal to O dash C since the figures are congruent their radii will be equal and OB is equal to O dash D since the figures are congruent their radii will be equal and also initially he has given that chords are of equal lengths therefore AB is equal to CD now by triple S property of congruency we can say both the triangles are congruent that is triangle AOB is congruent to triangle CO dash D when two triangles are congruent then their corresponding angles are equal therefore angle AOB is equal to angle CO dash D therefore equal chords of congruent circles subtend equal angles at their centers that is proved moving on to question number two prove that if chords of congruent circles subtend equal angles at their centers then the chords are of equal length now moving on to the solution now in the solution let us consider two circles respectively with the centers O and O dash and AB and PQ be the equal chords 
let AB and PQ be the chords in the two congruent circles which subtend the equal angles at the center that is angle AOB is equal to angle PO dash Q. Therefore, let us note on the information that there are two congruent circles given with centers O and O dash and he has also given angles obtained by the chords at the center is of equal. Therefore, here we can say that angle AOB is equal to angle PO dash Q. We need to prove that AB is equal to PQ. In order to prove this, let us consider in triangle AOB and triangle PO dash Q, OA is equal to PO dash. Since both the circles are congruent, we can say the radii will be equal and OB is equal to O dash Q. They are also the radii of the circles. And he has given that angle AOB is equal to angle PO dash Q. Now, hereby, SAS property of congruency, we can say triangle AOB is congruent to triangle PO dash Q. Therefore, we know that when two triangles are congruent, then their corresponding sides and corresponding angles can be equated. Therefore, here we can equate AB is equal to PQ. Now, the chords which subtend the equal angles at the center are of equal lenses proved.